All right, good, good to go. All right, let's do this. So today we're looking at BMW's R18. Their first foray into the cruiser market. Making no apologies for the fact that they're uh, well and truly after a bit of um, Harley Davidson's market. So let's run through a few uh, a few specs out early of the uh, of the R18. So we're looking at a 1800cc, 1802cc, boxer engine. It's two horizontally opposed 900cc cylinders sticking out on each uh, each side of the engine produces just shy of 160 newton meters of torque i think it's 158 newton meters of torque all up and about 90 91 horsepower um, now it produces uh, all that torque down fairly low about uh, two, two and a half thousand RPM and peak horsepower available um, about three, three and a half thousand. I'll flick up all the specs um, up on the screen just in case I have got something wrong which no doubt I have So, plenty of power, but you certainly need plenty of power on a bike that weighs nearly 400 kilograms. That's for sure. It's uh, certainly not a light bike, the BMW R18, that's for sure. But then again, it's not really a market that's known for light nimble bikes so at 400 kilo it's a pretty standard uh, standard affair for this market what's not so standard though is the handling of this beast she certainly corners well I'm sure you're bound to scrape her foot peg every now and again because she does hang low. But it's the first thing that I really, really noticed. Oh, oh sorry, I really, really noticed about this is that uh, it corners exceptionally well for a bike of its weight, and it doesn't—it doesn't feel 400 kilograms, to be honest with you. Even when you uh, you're, you're moving the thing around and you get it off the stand and because it sits so low I think it's seat the seat height is about 690 mil it holds the weight really really well I must admit it's a bit a bit worried about getting this thing off the uh, off the stand and feeling how heavy it was going to uh, it was going to feel but it really doesn't it really doesn't feel that heavy So even at low speeds through some of these uh, twisties we're being held up by this car at the front here. 
I still have no idea why cars take this back road, but anyway. It doesn't feel, doesn't feel heavy. Not at all. So other than the, the feel, i.e. The, uh, the perceived lack of weight when you're on the bike, this is the spec sheet. The other thing I noticed when I first jumped on the R18 was just how beautiful it is and how beautiful a place it is to sit. Um, the chrome, chrome reservoirs, chrome mirrors, this beautiful wide chrome bar, instrument cluster, everything really is just a beautiful place to, uh, to sit. My only gripe is probably this, uh, the, the switch gear, which just seems to be a standard BMW, uh, BMW affair. Seems a bit rushed. Uh, it doesn't really fit the aesthetic of, uh, of the bike, all in all. You can sort of see, I don't know whether you can see on the, on the, uh, on the camera or not, but the gap that sits between the, uh, the chrome housing and, and the switch gear just doesn't look like they're meant to go together. Which is a shame, because otherwise everything else is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. And I mentioned the instrument cluster as well. The instrument cluster is, uh, is beautifully laid out. Extremely simple, as you'd expect from this sort of motorcycle. Extremely simple, but really easy to read. Everything you need. It's not um, over the top with information. Finally get a bit of clear road. Sort of thing. Hopefully you can uh, you can hear me. There's a bit of wind noise at the moment. I apologise if uh, if you can't. So we go over the bridge. So yeah, as I was saying, attention to detail, not just in the cockpit, attention to detail over the entire bike. It's just stunning. Plenty of chrome. Massive cylinder head sticking out either side. Beautifully done. The exposed shaft drive, the chrome exposed shaft drive. Just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. But at 35 grand as tested, you would expect a good looking motorcycle. There are a few little niggles, some of the, uh, the wiring looms visible. Um, I mentioned the switch gear, which seems a bit out of place. A couple little bits and bobs around the bike that just seem a little off in comparison to the rest of the bike, but overall, it's a beautiful package. It really is. Comfort-wise, I mean, look, being a cruiser, it's obviously a comfortable, comfortable place to be. The seat is pretty hard. Um, when you first sit down on it, it certainly feels, feels quite hard. But, once you get up and get moving, it's, it's not something that you really notice um, too much. You will feel the bumps, however. I think um, anything bigger than a small deviation on the road, you're certainly going to feel through, through your backside. Not a lot of travel in the suspension. So you're certainly going to feel feel those bumps. But in terms of what's advertised on the tin as a cruiser, no problem at all. This thing will easily cruise around town, 
in second or third, no dramas whatsoever. You can get it out on the on the country roads and, and get it up to speed. It will absolutely chew miles and sit there very, very comfortably. No problems with that whatsoever. I get a little bit of uh, vibration through the through the bars, particularly once you start getting it up over 80 or 90 k's an hour. Nothing uncomfortable. You just certainly notice it. You see the mirrors sort of knocking around a bit, and the instrument cluster will certainly uh, will certainly bounce up and down. But. Nothing that's too uncomfortable to hurt the uh, the foot peg scrape there, maybe. That's something, as I said, that you uh, have to expect. Oh, there it goes again. So you're not going to be pushing... ...too hard up through the twisties because she will drop a peg and you will notice it that is for sure has a monumental lug on the bottom of the uh, of the foot pegs and when it scrapes on the ash belt it sends a rather large vibration through the foot pedal through the foot peg should I say so something to be aware of as you're leaning her over at least you're going to be scraping the foot pegs and not the uh, the beautiful fishtail exhausts on either side of the bike now talking of those exhausts they seem to be a bit contentious for a lot of people. Um, I'm not a massive fan myself. Uh, if it was my bike, that'd probably be the first thing that I did. Um, would be to pile through the parts catalog. Um, Vance and Hines offer a BMW genuine accessory for the exhaust. Um, and I would certainly be putting those straight through pipes. Oh, and I think the uh, the fishtail exhausts are a little bit too much for me. I would be stripping it back. But each to their own. As I said, I'm not a fan, but there are a number of people who are. So she's got plenty of shove. When it's time to get up and and boogie, those uh, 160 newton meters really come out. But again, these sorts of uh, twisty roads at speed is not really home to the R18. I mean, it'll get up and do it just fine, as you can see, but not really the R18's natural uh, natural environment. Not pushing hard through them anyway. So I've been thinking as we've had the R18. What's its purpose? I think it's been something that I've uh, been kind of struggling with, to be honest. Where where does it feel at home? So sorry, as I was saying, since I've had the R18, I've been struggling to understand the bike's purpose. 
especially the first edition. I mean, look, there's no doubting that it's a gorgeous motorcycle to look at. But as a cruiser, is it, is it really fitting, fitting its purpose as I pass a cruiser, a true cruiser on the other side of the road? So you can see there's, there's no wind protection. There's no bags on this, on the, uh, on the first edition. So carrying luggage is, is obviously an issue. Sure, you can get some accessories for it, but out of the tin, it's not set up to chew mile after mile after mile. So then what is it set up for? Well, around town, around busy urban streets, Look, it's fine, but is it my first choice? No. It's heavy. It's slow in comparison to plenty of other bikes out there. And certainly not my first, my first choice. Sure, it gets plenty of looks, but you're really spending $35,000 on a motorcycle that you're really going to, you know, ride on a Sunday to your local cafe or or pub to get get a few looks? Probably not. So if it's not a cruiser and it's not an urban commuter, then what is it? Something that I've been struggling with. So as we come into a, a quieter part of town, one thing I haven't talked about yet is the uh, the rider modes. So three rider modes on the R18. Rain, standard, obviously. And then rock and roll. Yes, you heard me right. Roll, I guess, is your around town. You know, lolloping along. Rider mode, whereas rock, which is the mode that I have it in at the moment, is yeah, you get up and boogie rider mode gives you all of the power, all of the time, obviously dials down the traction control, uh, traction control is switchable, so you can turn traction control off if you're that way inclined, um, with 160 newton meters of torque you will certainly spin the rear wheel should you choose to with traction control turned off. This is the uh, the fun part of the ride. See, oh, foot peg, foot peg. trying to find that that sweet spot coming into the corner of where to lean it over without dragging a foot peg. The 
there it is again. So it's bloody annoying, I must admit. Because it does feel like a really capable bike. It's got plenty of shove. It corners beautifully for the size of this thing. 2.4 meters long. 2.4 meters long. Nearly 400 kilograms. And the thing corners beautifully for the size of it. Only downside is that you can't really lean her over. So just coming back to the rider modes, certainly a noticeable difference from roll, uh, where you see a you know a, a rather doughy throttle, um, not a lot, not a lot there uh, down early. Um, you certainly need to roll roll on the throttle from a standstill, that's for sure. Not a lot of grab uh, early on. Um, it's not really until you sort of get the bike up over two, two and a half thousand RPM that it starts to get up and boogie. Uh, whereas, oh, foot peg. Um, whereas in roll, uh, sorry, uh, within rock mode, you certainly feel the responsiveness, uh, which is good. A lot of the times, uh, rider modes, to be honest with you, I can't really tell the difference. Uh, so it's actually nice that there's a distinct difference between the two rider modes. And rain, I um, mean, rain's rain. You can put it in rain if you like, but don't think it's really that necessary. Uh, very intrusive ABS traction control, extremely intrusive. So, whether or not you need to use that mode, well, that's up to you. The, uh, the other thing that I have noticed with the rock rider mode is that the throttle at low RPM through sort of first and second. It's not that it's snatchy, it's the, the, the fueling feels a bit off. So the bike tends to surge and putt along, uh, which is a little, uh, a little annoying. So I find myself choosing the roll mode around town and only switching it into rock when you get out onto the open road like this just just because of that feeling down low it is it is very annoying as it sort of chugs along out here in rock it's fine no issues And all in all, I must say, it's a relatively pleasurable experience out on these roads. Would I prefer to be on something else around these twisties on a beautifully fresh morning? Yeah, probably. Am I unhappy? No. No, I'm not. Here wrapping up our review of BMW's R18. Been out on the old girl all day. 
um, riding on some twisty country roads. Um, also spent a fair bit of time on the R18 around um, the urban environment here in Sydney. Um, so we formed a half decent opinion um, of the motorcycle, I think. Um, so 1800 cc's, um, 160 newton meters of torque, just, just shy, I think 158 newton meters of torque, um, 91 horsepower. Um, just shy of 400 kilo wet. Um, three rider modes, um, rain, roll and rock. Um, each adjusting uh, fueling, thr uh, throttle response, um, as well as traction control um, and ABS. Um, this is the first edition. Um, so it's got the first edition package, which includes uh, the pinstriping along the tank. Um, also is fitted with the reverse gear, um, which is uh, a bit of a novelty, um, as well as obviously some first edition, first edition badging um, and the like. So the bike is tested, um, comes in at a touch over $32,000, um, it's Australian dollars. Um, as of the test, as of um, April 2021. Um, so yeah, as I said, we've been riding uh, the R18 all day um, out on some, some twisty country roads um, and also been riding around um, the urban environments. So we've got a good feel for how the motorcycle um, goes over these varied, um, varied uses. Um, what do we say? What do we say about it, really? Um, I think again, the the consistent theme that's that's sort of really um, you know continued throughout this review has been kind of one of confusion. We've been trying to find a home for the R18. Um, look, as a styling exercise, it's uh, it's gorgeous. It's it's it's, it's extremely well built. Um, chrome, as far as the eye can see. Um, beautiful pinstriping on the tank. These cylinders, just absolutely gorgeous. Um, got the exposed uh, shaft drive on the other side of the motorcycle. Um, love them or loathe them. The uh, the fishtail exhausts. Um, beautiful, absolutely stunning machine to look at. Um, the 1800cc um, Boxer Twin. Um, it's a fantastic engine, plenty of grunt, as you'd expect from 160 newton meters of torque. Um, but as a consequence of such a big boxer engine, um, as I said, the motorcycle is heavy. It's very heavy, 400 kilograms in total. Um, but it does carry it well. Um, it carries the weight extremely low. Um, it's easy to get on and off the side stand um, and corners exceptionally well for a bike as big as it is. Um, it's also 2.4 meters long. Uh, so it is a big motorcycle, um, but it, it doesn't feel heavy um, most of the time. Uh, so on the country roads today, absolutely fine. Doesn't feel heavy at all. Um, as I mentioned, getting it on and off the side stand, certainly not heavy. Even moving it around, um, you know, uh, on idle or in neutral around the garage um, is fine. But as I mentioned, on country roads, you certainly do notice that handling. Um, again, you know, we mentioned, I feel like I've mentioned the, the size and weight of the machine um, too much, but given the weight and the size of it, um, it handles amazingly well over country roads. Um, and it's almost a pity um, that it didn't have more uh, ground clearance. Um, Quite often, uh, you'll find yourself hitting um, hitting the pegs um, as you're leaning the bike over into a corner, which is a shame because it's such a capable machine. Um, yet, it's difficult to lean it over or find the right angle to lean it over without scraping those pegs. I just felt that if I had a little bit more ground clearance, it would be a far more desirable, not desirable, a far more comfortable um, machine and thrilling machine around tight country roads. But as it stands, given the size of it, 
it handles beautifully. Um, so that's something we certainly fell in love with. Um, the rider modes, um, as I mentioned up front, um, rain, roll, rock. Um, uh, look, I found myself keeping uh, keeping the bike in rock through the uh, through the uh, through the country roads. Um, throttle response is is really good. Um, ABS traction control not intrusive. Um, definitely the best experience through country roads. Um, around town, however, um, the fueling down low of rock mode is is such that it can feel um, a little bit a little bit jumpy. Um, doesn't feel like um, there's a lot of uh, throttle control um, down down low. Um, and sort of anything below two and a half thousand revs, um, it really wants sort of you know wants to rock and roll back and forth, um, which is not pleasurable. So I find myself dropping it down to roll um, around urban, and for that it's fine. Um, with roll, um, find that the throttle can be a little bit, little bit doughy, um, just just through through the first sort of you know thousand two thousand RPM. Um, then after that, the bike will pick up and. Um, and deliver the power um, and rain. To be honest, we haven't had it in rain. Um, in rain, much we have ridden it through uh, through through rain, but we left it in road, um, and uh, it was it was absolutely fine. So I think that's probably about it. Um, I think I've mentioned everything that I need needed to mention. Um, if I've forgotten anything, you want to know about anything, um, by all means, please f feel free to leave a uh, leave a comment down below, um, and uh, yeah, hit us up if uh, if there's anything else you'd like to know. Um, otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, we've certainly enjoyed making it. Um, if you're new here, make sure that you uh, give the video a um, a like or a thumbs up. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well to stay across all the content. Um, from the Motor Lane YouTube channel. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you jump online and um, check us out, www.motorlanemc.com for all things urban motorcycle culture. Anyway, that's it from me for the BMW R18. It's been a pleasurable experience um, and I hope you've enjoyed the review. Thanks.